Hey, AP Environmental Science students, this is Mr. Smeads, and today we'll be covering topic 6.4, which is the distribution of natural energy resources across the globe. Our objective for the day is to be able to identify where natural energy resources occur globally, and also the skill that we'll be practicing at the end of today's video is explaining a relationship or a difference between environmental concepts shown in a visual model. So the first thing we'll do here is just cover the basic proven reserves estimated to be remaining for each major fossil fuel source and where these fossil fuels are located. And so first we should know that coal is the largest proven reserves remaining. We estimate the coal reserves of the earth to last somewhere between 100 and 150 years at current rates of consumption. And then we should know that these are some of the top coal containing countries. That'd be the United States, Russia, China, and Australia. Now, one thing I want to point out is it's not super important that you memorize this list, uh, but you should be vaguely familiar with some of these top producing countries. Again, at most, this would come up as like one multiple choice question, you know, on your exam, but it doesn't hurt to be aware of these top uh, proven reserves in terms of where they're located. Next, we have natural gas. Natural gas is estimated to uh, remain anywhere from 50 to 60%. Uh, at a current rate of consumption. So again, that would be how much natural gas is left on earth if we continue consuming it at the current rate of consumption. And then finally, we have oil, which is at about 50 years uh, remaining in terms of, again, how long the proven reserves that we currently have are estimated to last. Now, these estimates are just that, they're estimates. They're also subject to change as we explore and expand new areas of extracting these fossil fuel resources. So what we'll do in the remainder of this video is go through a few newer forms of fossil fuel extraction and talk about how they extend the world's uh, remaining supply of some of these fossil fuel resources. And so first we have fracking of shale gas. So hydraulic fracturing, also known as fracking, is a method of natural gas extraction, basically where we are going to pipe in water underneath the ground at a really high pressure, fracture the shale that contains the gas, and then extract it. Now it's important to point out that as fracking expands, it opens up new areas to natural gas exploration and extraction. So it may temporarily extend uh, the estimates of the amount of time left we have to utilize natural gas on earth. Um, again, as I talked about here, this is gas that's trapped in a semi-permeable sedimentary rock, uh, such as shale. And again, we release it by pumping water underneath the ground in really high pressurized tubes. So we drill a well down into the ground and pressurized water is pumped down. What happens is there's a perforating gun that goes out and cracks the rock here. And then we pump the water into the rock and it breaks it further. Hence the name fracking, which comes from fracturing of the rock. And then the gas is free to flow out of these cracks of, of the rock. Uh, and we can see the gas flows into the well here and then we can pump the gas up and out. So that's how humans actually extract natural gas through fracking. And again, it's important to point out that this basically extends our current estimated reserves of natural gas. And so we can see here, if we look at this diagram, since the US began expanding fracking heavily in 2008, uh, which you can't see, which got covered up by my slide there, um, but we can look here and see that there's this huge increase in natural gas uh, consumption and production because of the extension of fracking, which again, opens up new areas of previously unrecoverable natural gas. One thing that I do want to point out here when it comes to shale gas uh, and oil sands and tar sands that we'll talk about in a second is that fossil fuels are still non-renewable. Um, so no matter how many new ways we come up with for extracting fossil fuels, at the end of the day, they do represent short-term extensions of an ultimately exhaustible fuel source. So these short-term profits for companies and for countries that expand their extraction of natural gas or of petroleum, uh, they do drive the exploration. But again, it doesn't change the fact that we will eventually run out of fossil fuels. Um, and so one thing is that a lot of these reserves that have been proven, which means basically we've explored and concluded that we could recover that fossil fuel if we drilled for it and extracted it, uh, that is a tiny fraction in certain cases of the total technically recoverable amount of fossil fuels, meaning that based on surveys and based on sort of geological estimates, it's probably likely that there's even more of these fossil fuels in the ground still left to be recovered. 
And so this is kind of a tricky issue because countries, uh, again, see this as a very profitable short term business to pursue. But we do know that fossil fuels are limited. They will run out eventually. Again, we can become, uh, in, you know, sort of innovative and create new ways to extract fossil fuels. But at the end of the day, they are exhaustible and they will run out eventually. And then another alternative form of extracting fossil fuels and utilizing them is from tar or from oil sand. So this is something we've covered, but we're going to touch on again how it expands and extends our supply of crude oil. And then also just have a quick review of how we extract these resources. So remember, these are going to be bitumen deposits where crude oil can be recovered, but with really high uh, energy and water inputs. And one thing that we need to know definitely uh, when it comes to the distribution of uh, oil and tar sands is that Canada, specifically the Alberta region, has the world's largest oil sands reserve. And so just like fracking, uh, tar and oil sands are going to extend our supply of petroleum in this case. So just like fracking opens up new areas for natural gas extraction, uh, oil sands and tar sands are going to do the same thing for petroleum. So that 50 years is an estimate, could be extended by, again, the continued exploration of tar and oil sands. So here's what a uh, tar or oil sands extraction pit looks like. Remember, this is highly water intensive. It's highly energy intensive because we have to use a lot of steam to get this thick, very sticky bitumen to basically flow uh, into pipes. This is kind of like heating up like molasses or cold syrup to get it to flow. And then we can see here that similar to the US uh, increase in natural gas production when the shale era began around 2008 or so, we have a similar increase in Canada, uh, specifically from the Alberta region where we just have this huge increase in their oil sands production. And again, to meet this growing uh, world demand for oil uh, that really has always been extremely high and continues to be high. So anytime that we find a new area where there's the possibility of extracting petroleum, again, it's very profitable in the short term to start extracting that resource. And so we can see this huge increase in Canada's oil sands production, again, as new technology and new techniques open up new areas for natural uh, resource extraction. In this case, oil sands and tar sands uh, being used to extract crude oil to turn into all of the products that we use it for. So this slide should look familiar uh, from previous video notes. No new notes to write down here, but just a very quick review again of that process. So remember that bitumen is a thick, uh, very, very sticky and dense basically form of uh, crude oil where it's mixed with a bunch of impurities. And so we have to inject a bunch of steam and really hot water basically to melt this into a liquid that will flow up through the pipes. So it's really water intensive and really energy intensive. So if we take a look at this diagram here, again, uh, not a new slide, not anything you need to write new notes on, but I just want to remind us of why crude oil and why petroleum are so useful. Uh, we can use them to create all of this diversity of products. So the bitumen itself can be used in asphalt to create our roads. We have the motor oil that goes in our engines you know, fuel for all sorts of vehicles, basically. And this is just a really, really diverse uh, product that we also use in plastics. So petroleum is something that is used, again, very widely throughout tons of economic sectors. And it's a large reason why Canada and Al the Alberta region and really any region that has tar sands and oil sands are probably going to continue to extract those petroleum reserves in the short term. In our practice of our queue for topic 6.4 today, I want you to take a look at this map and identify a region of the United States that is large, that is likely to be a large producer of natural gas. And then finally, I want you to try to describe the geological features associated with natural gas reserves. So again, look at this map, look at the areas that you think would make an area likely to have a natural gas deposit.